Kuti Gutwa's Doctor is back on our screens with the first episode of this new season one of Doctor Who with an episode called Space Babies. But was this episode any good? Or was it a load of meconium? Let us find out in my review. So welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, so Doctor Who is back. It aired last night at midnight. This is officially Doctor Who under Disney. Season one of this new series, Space Babies, written by Russell T. Davis, the showrunner of the new series. 46 minutes in length. So this episode here, it, it starts off where the Christmas special left um, and we see Billy Gibson's character entering into the TARDIS um, and she goes on a journey with the Doctor. There's an exposition dump given to us at the very start of the episode for new viewers, for people who don't know about the Doctor. His history is given to us in, um, uh, yeah, this this few sentences from Kuti Gutwa. Um, they travel 150 million years into the past where um, Ruby steps onto a butterfly and changes things. She turns into another being. But a doctor using a bit of his um, powers, his regeneration powers, brings this butterfly back to life, resetting things. This opens a lot of questions, but it's then shut off by the fact that he operates this butterfly compensation switch. Yes, we get through with that one. Um, anyway, they then travel and they appear on this space station in the lower bowels where it's dark, dingy, alien-esque, where they get chased by this um, blood-curdling alien, big teeth, slime, all that sort of stuff. A little riff on aliens. And then they go up a level. They go up a level in a lift and... There's loads of babies. There's babies in these remote control wheelchairs. I kid you not, they're in these remote control wheelchairs, whizzing around, and the babies can talk. They can talk. They've got, you know, they use uh, CGI to make the mouths look like the babies are talking. Um, there's a Genesis machine. This is a baby farm. Babies are being born, being grown and born on this ship. Only the adults have left the ship. They've left it. They've gone back to their planet because there's no money to run this 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 vessel. Um, but law says that they can't turn off the baby machine. So the babies are left there and the babies have grown on their own and they are operating the systems, etc., etc. Only it turns out that there is a nanny on board, but she's keeping hidden. Um, and the babies are scared of this creature down below. The boogeyman. Or the bogeyman. Um, yeah. That's pretty much the story for this episode. You know, there's a bit of chasing. There's a bit of running around. You know, there's the reveal of the nanny. There's the reveal that the monster is actually made of bogeys. Yes, literal bogeys. But the monster gets saved at the end. And a new planet is found for the babies to live on. Crap. Utter crap. Um, okay, no, come on, be fair. Okay, I didn't like what we got before, yeah? Now, I'm not sold on Kuti Gutwa as the Doctor. Um, he doesn't really do anything for me at all. And... When I watch a program, I want to I watch it for escapism. I don't want to be lectured. And that's what the earlier episodes of, of, of Doctor Who have done. I'm talking about the previous five episodes have lectured me. Four or five episodes have lectured me. This episode had it. It had it there. Sprinklings. Um, the Doctor saying, I've got no mission. I've got no cause. Only there is a cause for this show. It, it felt like a bit of a sort of um, um, sort of like 
you know, yeah, no, it just doesn't, you know. Um, nobody grows up wrong. You are what you are. There is some lecturing in this episode. It's there. It's very light. But, so, that was pretty good. The episode started well. I thought, okay, this is a good start. This is a good start. I hadn't seen a trailer for this episode. I didn't know what it was about. I know it's called Space Babies. But the minute you've got babies running around in their little carts, talking, you've lost it. You've lost me as an audience member at that point in this episode. I don't care what's going on. It's not, you know, okay, this is a kid's show. It is a kid's show, and I'm sure that kids are watching this, and they love this. This, you know, young, young kids. There's babies all oh, talking, you know, but utter oh, nonsense. No, drivel from a, a, the perspective of, of, of an adult, essentially. But, yes, I know, I, I, I respect that it is a kid's show. The budget looks good. Um, the title sequence, I thought the title sequence was great. The new music, um, I liked all that. For the most part, the effects, very good. The sets, very good. Looks more vibrant, more colourful. The space looks more colourful, this sort of a thing. Um, there's a lot of good stuff on display in the ramped up budget. But ultimately, it comes down to the Doctor and um, Ruby. Did I call her Rose earlier on? I may have done. It's Ruby Rose, isn't it? I don't know. Anyway. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it wasn't good. It wasn't good storytelling. It was... It's a strange first episode. Seriously. Why, why you would choose this as your first episode? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um, not good. Not good. Not a fan of the Doctor's costume. I don't think that was... was very good. Um, yeah, I'm not sold on Cootie Goodwar. Um, I'm sure some people will be. But no, it just... Um, it had good elements, but for the most part, pretty abysmal. Pretty abysmal episode. What more can I say? Doctor Pooh.